Good morning, good morning, Virtue Group. It is February the 1st. Mmm, wow. Can you believe that we are starting the second month of 2020? Like, honestly, it's hard for me to believe. It's, uh, like, I can't even believe it's here already. And, uh... Well, guess what? It's here. <laughs> and there's nothing we can do to stop it. It just is what it is. So I'm going to go ahead and just jump straight into this on this beautiful Saturday morning. It's absolutely beautiful in North Florida. It's a little overcast, which is cool. It's keeping it a little bit cooler. Um, but it's nice. It's just like a nice energy in the air. And I don't know, are you guys like that? Can you sense the energy? And I can sense it. Like when I get up in the mornings, I can just tell what kind of day it is. And... A lot of times I'll go and look and our neighbors have horses and cows and chickens and, and the whole nine, you know, a little mini farm over there. So, and I can go and look and tell by the way the horses and the cows are acting like, wow, what kind of day there? So it's, it, you know, what, how's it going to be? Like yesterday they were all lethargic. They weren't moving. The horses were like head to head standing, looking at each other. And so I looked it up and sure enough, the rain was predicted to be about an hour away and Sure enough, here it come, like the animals knew, right? Isn't that super cool? <laughs> and that's not what I was going to talk about today, but I just wanted to kind of mention that real quick now that I'm thinking about it, is that um, humans are the only beings on earth that take our natural instinct, this God-given instinct that we have that, like all the animals have this instinct, right? But humans have a next level of instinct, and, and we, we have a logic, and we have an ability to think logical that most animals don't have. And some have more than others. I'm not saying they don't. Obviously, we've seen that before. Good morning, Alex. Good morning, Tim. Heather, good morning. How is everybody doing today? We'd love to see where you're watching from. It'd be awesome if you'd share with us. So... Humans, we're, we're the only ones that, like, we get funny, and we, we sense something in our gut, or uh, our intuition tells us something, and we push it to the side, and we don't, we don't pay attention. We don't uh, act on what we know we should, we should do, or, um, so it's just interesting, you know, you get up in the morning, and, and the weather's one way, the, the barometric pressure's one way, and and the animals are acting accordingly. And uh, humans, we have the ability to, we could go, oh, look, it is going to rain, but I'm going to push through and do some work anyways, which is how you can use that to your benefit, right? You just know what's coming and, and you suck it up and go, you know what? I need to, I need to go do this. I need to go do this thing. Um, and, but, you know, where it, where it works wonderful for animals is their ability to continue to survive as a species even in hard times, even in hard climates, even in, you know, whatever. And for some reason, our human brain, as logical as it is, is designed to protect us from things that may harm us. In other words, it wants to keep us in the comfort zone. And um, so when we, when an animal would maybe push through something like, hey, I have to go eat, get out of my way, I'm walking through these bushes. You know, yeah, they're scratching me. Yeah, they're pushing me. But I know there's there's a good field on the other side. And I need to go get some fresh food. You know, even a cow will push through the bushes to get to the other side to eat some good green grass or push through a barbed wire fence. How many times have we seen that? A, a cow or a horse push a fence down to go get some better food on the other side. But for some reason, humans see fences or we see uh, uh, the bushes with the thorns in it and, and we just, we don't push through. Like, it's just... It's weird. If a cow can do it, I assure you that you can do it because you're not a cow. You're much better. You're a rhino. You have thick skin, a big horn, and nothing stops a charging rhino but a charging rhino. So with that said today, guys, mm, that's good stuff, good stuff. <laughs> Winston Churchill said, never waste a good crisis. Wow. Never waste a good crisis. I mean... Whew. If you think about his day back when he said it and what was going on, World War II and all that stuff that was going on, like that, that was a big deal. Never waste a good crisis. And though 
we may not be going through a crisis in our personal business right now. People go through crises, crises, cri, cr, cr, yeah. People have crises. People go through that kind of stuff all the time. <laughs> and um, but here's the thing: if you program your human brain to look for that silver lining in the storm, right? You can turn every crisis into something positive. You can turn it into something good. And I'm not going to get into little individual crises today. And I don't mean to belittle it by saying little individual. Um, but I mean particular things. But I want to talk about something much bigger real quick. <clears throat> Excuse me. Lord have mercy. These sinuses, the, the oak trees are dropping pollen faster than... I, I had never seen them drop it this early. Let me just say it that way. Mmm. That's good stuff. So, um, Winston Churchill says, never waste a good crisis. Now, how, how I'm going to give you three steps, three really easy things. I don't know if you want to jot them down. I would. I mean, I read it and I jotted it down. So, uh, success leaves clues. Never waste a good crisis. There's three ways <clears throat> that you can make sure that you never waste a good crisis and turn it into something good. Number one, you want to be primed. You want to be primed. What does that mean? Well, you want to be primed for what is coming. So what am I talking about today in particular if I'm talking about this crisis? Well, uh, whether you want to admit it or not, um, and back in 2007, 2008, I would not admit it. Kim and I were selling real estate as fast as we could sell real estate as well as doing the landscape and irrigation. And I can't tell you how many mentors, how many people in the industry came to me and they're like, dude, listen, you need, you guys need to get prepared. There's going to be a big real estate bust and the bubble's going to pop. I'm like, what bubble? Dude, the bubble's going to pop. I'm like, dude, what bubble? There ain't no bubble. Y'all are on crack. You're an idiot. And guess what? I was the idiot. <laughs> I must have been on crack because the bubble popped. It was like somebody reached up and just turned the light switch off and there was no more money, no more sales, no more nothing. And I'm telling you right now, those swings happen about every 10 to 12 years. And we're long overdue. That was 2008. Guys, we're in 2020. We haven't had one since. We're in the best, best economy we've been in since. Best economy, probably best American economy we've had in history. Seriously. Seriously. You can thank Trump. You can thank whoever. I don't care. The point is, we're in the best situation we've been in ever. But it never stays there. And you have to know that and you have to be aware of that. And do believe, even though Trump's the president, even though he's happy and boastful that we're in the best economy of the world that America's ever been in, he knows it can't stay there. Nothing stays at the top. You're never as successful as you think you are, and you're never as big a failure as you think you are. It just didn't, it never is. You have to continually be preparing for the worst and be preparing and looking for the best. So <clears throat> with that said, we're long overdue in this market to have a, to see a crash. Now, a lot of people think it'll happen in the next 12 months. Some say within the next 24. But I'm telling you, if you take the route of 24, that's still not very long from now, right? It's only two years. Are you prepared to be able to pay all the bills you're paying right now if the economy crashes? Because here's the deal, guys. They're saying it's not going to be like 2008. It's going to be like the 20s. I'm serious. Everybody's talking about it. Everybody's talking about it. Now, you might not hear it in your circles at the level that we're talking about it today. Here's the reason why. The big dogs. Has anybody ever heard this saying? <clears throat> if you've heard this, put in the comments. Let me know that you've heard it. Have you ever heard the saying, the rich get... Yep, I'm not even going to finish the saying. Put whatever that word is. The rich get what? The rich get blank and the poor get poor. What do the rich get? Put the answer in the comments there if you would. The rich get blank. The poor get poor. The reason is right now, as the rich people are preparing for the economic crash to come, you have to understand that number one, they're preparing to take care of their businesses and their families. Number two, and this could even be number one, 
they're preparing what they're doing now to take advantage of the recession. There you go. That's right. You guys got it. The rich get richer. That's right, Deanna, <clears throat> Alex, Cast. So right now, the rich, the people who are not talking about this in mainstream media, they're preparing to take advantage of this bust. Now, um, people like Tony Robbins and Gary Vee and Darren Hardy and uh, Ed Miley, the people that we follow, the people that we suggest you follow, they're talking about this. Why are they talking about it and the other people aren't? Because they want you to be able to prepare yourself and your family and your finances to not only make it through this bad time, but to profit during this time. The other rich people aren't teaching you that. Okay, so we're going to teach you this. We're going to go through it just like you are. We're going to share with you what we're doing. So back to Winston, Winston Churchill said, never miss a good crisis. The first way that you never miss it, you're primed for what is coming, meaning you're primed, like you're, you're ready. Like you, you, if I'm priming a motor, if I prime my weed eater, I hit the little bulb and get all the little gas in there, I put the choke on and I do all that before I try to crank that thing. You're primed, meaning you acknowledge that it's coming and you're ready to get ready. You're primed. Okay. The second piece is you're prepared for the with the right skills. <sighs> prepared with the right skills. Think about that for a second. Mm, that's good stuff. So <clears throat> in Virtue Group, we're going to prepare you. We're going to give you the right skills to be prepared to handle this <clears throat> bust that's coming. I hate to even use the word recession because it's gonna be bad. You're gonna, you need to be primed and then prepared with the right skills to handle what's gonna happen, okay? And then the third piece, Winston Churchill says, <clears throat> you need to be positioned with the right strategies positioned. And in Virtue Group, we're going to teach you how to be positioned with the right strategies. And I tell you what, um, there's only one profession in the world that is basically recession proof. Mm. And that would be the network marketing profession. Why would network marketing profession be recession proof? Because it's it's real simple idea. Think about this. You get a large group of people to take a little tiny bit of action all together. You move a small group of people or a large group of people through a little step, one little step from point A to point B. When that happens, product moves. When product moves, money moves. When money good morning, Debbie McKay. I haven't seen you in a while, girl. We need to talk. When product moves, money moves, and money moves, you get paid. And collectively, we could do that. And so network marketing <clears throat> also is kind of removed from the mainstream um, brick and mortar businesses that are affected on a multitude of levels when it comes to economic collapse. And we're talking about, let's just call it a $100 product. And I know if you're in our global team, it does cost you a little more to pay to play this game right now. Um, but right now, we're going to use this $100 product that we have. And, <clears throat> excuse me, even in an economic collapse, a $100 product is doable for most people in the world. <clears throat> yeah, and Mike, Mike just nailed it. He got ahead of me. Dang it. No, I'm kidding. So... The other thing is, why does our, and I'm just talking about network marketing in general, right? But why does our company, why are we so much better than even other companies in network marketing? Mmm. Dang, that's so good. I'm going to keep doing my money murmurings with my coffee all morning because I'm going to get up and have coffee every day. It doesn't matter if the economy's in, in a 1920. Uh, recession or depression or if we're in the 2020 Trump rules the universe and 
rides a white horse from shining armor. I'm just making a joke. I, I really don't care how good the economy is or how bad the economy is. Guess what Sean's going to do? Sean's going to drink coffee every day. Sean's also is going to do Facebook lives on his cell phone that I'm on right now every day. Sean doesn't have cable TV and he's going to continue to do that every day. But most Americans are going to have coffee, beer, cell phones, and cable TV in the greatest recession and the greatest depression. They're not going to get rid of those things. So the cell phone, not only is it a means of communication, but it is a means of entertainment. And, you know, what did people do during the recession? What did people do during the depression in the 20s? They got out and there's there's all kind of, I, I love to see these pictures where people are like, the internet's the devil. People lose connection. Social media is the devil. Man, it's a road in our society. No, the lack of Jesus is a road in our society, but we won't go there. But what I love to see is this. I love to see pictures from the Depression in New York. And and it, you, this is what you'll see. You'll see people either in coffee shops, drinking coffee with a big old newspaper, or you'll see them lined up on the street with the coffee sitting on the sidewalk and a big old newspaper and they're leaning against the sidewalk. It'd be 20 people in a row and they're all reading the newspaper. They're not talking to each other. Hello? Hello? They're not talking to each other. They're congregating in an area to read the news and drink coffee. This is even in the, the Great Depression in the 20s. So today, people congregate at coffee shops or wherever they might sit, and they take their phone out to read the news or Facebook or whatever it is they're reading, and they drink coffee. It's no different. The internet, the phone, it's just a greater source of what they were already doing. It's not the devil. I can promise you that. It pays my bills. It allows me to go out and bless people in ways that I wouldn't be able to do prior to the internet. It's not. It's a tool. It's like money. So, guys, with that said, I'm just going to recap with this. I hope this just kind of expands your, your thinking process. If you're not thinking about the depression that's coming, you need to be thinking about it. You need to buckle down now. If you're, if you're just like, hey, Sean, I'm not here to build a biz business. I'm happy where I'm at. I'm happy just getting my product for free. I'm not even here to make money. I just wanted to get my product for free. If that's you, cool. We love you. We really do, and we hope you stay forever because the product's awesome, and drinking awesome product for free is even awesomer. But if you're here and, and like you're trying to build a business, if you're crazy like I am <clears throat> or even more crazy like Mike is, <laughs> and you want to build a big crazy business because you want to go out and impact thousands of lives, or guess what? You want to pay for your car. Maybe getting free products not enough for you. Maybe you just want to pay for your car. I'm going to challenge you to really buckle down and think about what's going to happen in the next 12 to 24 months if your side hustle, coffee business, is not paying for your car. Who's going to pay for it in the next 12 to 24 months? Because, guys, I'm telling you, I personally feel a responsibility, not just for my immediate family, but for my family and friends as a whole and to you guys in Virtue Group, that we, pre I just feel a responsibility to anybody that I may possibly have an ear to speak to, whoever that is, wherever that is. It could be in the gym. It just doesn't matter. I just know I've been there. I've seen people hurting. I was hurting. And that wasn't even that bad compared to what they say it's going to be this time around. And I just hate to see that somebody's not ready for this thing. So just, if you're crazy like us and you really want to be prepared and you really want to help other people be prepared, then let's buckle down. Let's get prepared. Let's create an income through this company that's going to continue to pay us through this depression when everybody else doesn't know what to do. Maybe we, because listen, the fact of the matter is we can't save everybody. We just can't. So we can save as many as we can save. And that and if we give it 109%, then then we can hold our head up and say we did all we could do. But maybe we build an income big enough that we can at least help some of the people around us through this time.
until it turns around because it could be a seven to 10 year swing. Think about that. In the next 12 to 24 months, the economy crashed for the next seven to 10 years. What are you going to do? Are you going to be a part of the whiners, the groaners, the bitchers that don't have anything? Oh my God, the economy. But if you're on here and you watch this, I'm telling you it's coming. And if you don't prepare and you've been told, well, I'm going to let you pick what the word is. I don't want to be the one to say it because ignorance is the lack of knowledge. A lot of people are ignorant to what's coming. They really are, and it's not their fault. It's just the lack of knowledge. They haven't been told. But stupidity is being told and knowing it and just choosing not to do anything about it. So which one are you going to be? Well, if you've followed me all the way and heard me say that through this live and you choose not to do it, then you know which the answer is. It's not ignorance because now you know. So anyhow, I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just trying to point out the fact that when you've been told, you got to make your mind up if you're going to use this crisis as good or not. And if you decide to never waste a good crisis, then you want to be primed for what's coming. You want to prepare for what's coming and you want to be positioned for what's coming. And uh, that's what we're going to explore. We're going to deep dive into in Virtue Group here over the next couple of weeks. I hope you guys are ready. Uh, we're going to pack full that training section and in, in the units there. Uh, and I'm going to read out what Mike just said. No matter who the president is, uh, what their policies are, etc., successful entrepreneurs will always be fine. It's coming. Don't get caught with your pants down. And that is how we're going to close it out, guys. I couldn't set it any more better than that. I can promise you this. It doesn't matter how you vote. It doesn't matter uh, what your what your political uh, views are. It doesn't matter uh, whether you're a Christian or not. It doesn't matter uh, if you're black or white or any color in between. It doesn't matter what continent and planet you live on. When the American economy crashes, it crashes and the entire world feels it. It just does. And um, the question is, are you going to get caught with your pants down or are you going to go and get prepared for this thing and be in a position to help? Uh, because it doesn't matter who the president, it doesn't matter the policies, successful entrepreneurs will always be fine. It's coming. All right, guys, we love you. We hope you feel us on that. I know it's kind of, it wasn't a funny ha ha ha. Um, it's kind of a serious, um, not that we're like getting bogged down it with it or nothing, but I just felt like uh, Mike and I talk about this every day, literally. It's not a day we don't talk about and not not like, oh, it's coming. Oh my God, what are we going to do? We don't, we're, it's more like, mm, dude, I'm so glad we got this stuff. We're going to be recession proof. And the money that we're making from this crazy happy coffee, we're investing in the other stuff that helps pad us, helps put some cushion between us and the recession. Thank God that we're doing this. We got to share this with more people. That's how we talk every day to each other. And when you catch that fire, you'll go and change lives. All right, guys, with that said, I got to go. See you. Love you. Go have fun. It's Saturday.